Application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 6 My Weekly Milk Welcome to My Weekly Milk, where one can be fed with the milk of the Word of God, be stirred up in the Spirit and endued with spiritual strength to face the challenges one might encounter during the week and come out victorious. One can pass on or forward this My Weekly Milk to as many people as he thinks it might bless. The Bible has the final authority. Therefore, brethren, whatever you read in this letter, be like the Christians of Berea who went back and checked in the Scriptures if it was so. This My Weekly Milk is presented to you by M. M. Jerry, but everybody calls me G. Topic Application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 6 The Work of the Flesh and the Fruit of the Spirit Chapter 1 The Works of the Flesh versus the Fruit of the Spirit Jesus personally tells us that when we are born again, people will know us by our fruits, saying, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruits, nor can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that does not bring forth good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruit you shall know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and through your name throw out demons, and through your name do many wonderful works? And then I will say to them, I never knew you, Depart from me, those working lawlessness or iniquity. Matthew 7, verse 16 to 23. Sometimes in church, people think because they come every Sunday to church, that they are born again. When a person is born again, his or her heart is genuinely transformed. The stony heart he or she had is replaced with a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36 verse 26 and 2 Corinthians 3 verse 3. When a born-again Christian sins, he feels so bad because the Holy Spirit of his Father God who dwells in him or her is grieved and convicts him or her of sin. But when someone who professes to be born again is enjoying sin, that person does not have the Spirit of the Lord. John 16 verse 8 and Ephesians 4 verse 30 Even baby born-again Christians, though they do not know all the scriptures yet, as soon as they sin they feel so bad. When you are born again you want to get rid of sin in your life. You just want someone to tell you how to effectively overcome sin in your life. So, when you observe the life of a born-again Christian, you will see some of the manifestations of the aspects of the fruit of the Spirit, and as he or she matures in the knowledge of the Word of God and the application of that Word of God in his or her life, people will see more and more of the other aspects of the fruit of the Spirit. So sometimes in church, we have people who are not born again, but they are religious or convicted sinners. Knowing all the scriptures or quoting all the scriptures does not mean that you are born again. Jesus likens those religious people to goats, not sheep, as we have explained in the perfect redemption plan, The Lord is My Shepherd. But sometimes, even worse than that, Jesus likens them to wolves in sheep's clothing, saying, Go in through the narrow gate, for wide is a gate, and broad is a way that leads to destruction, and many there are who go in through it. Because narrow is the gate, and constricted is a way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. 
Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Matthew 7 verse 13 to 15 Paul therefore tells us, Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge, agnosia, ignorant, ignorance, not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 34 So, if someone is practicing sin, that person does not know God, and Jesus will say to that person in the last days, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity or lawlessness. So let us see some of the works of the flesh that we must get rid of in our life so that we will be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that bear much fruit to the glory of our God. Isaiah 61 verse 3 I know that you are already born again, yet Jesus wants you and me to bear fruit, and if we are already bearing some aspects of the fruit of the Spirit, the Father wants to prune us, so that we will bear much fruit. Jesus told us, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every one that bears fruit, he prunes it, so that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. John 15 verse 1 to 5 Jesus tells us a parable that depicts the heart of God for believers. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why does it cumber or use up the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that you shall cut it down. Luke 13, verse 6 to 9. The fig tree represents a spiritual Israel that we have become, a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified in us. Isaiah 61, verse 3, and Hosea 9, verse 10. The leaves talk about our profession or confession, and the fruits talk about us practicing what we are professing or confessing to be. God's plan is to train us for three years, and if we are slow learners, to take a fourth year to reteach us the basics. But He wants to see fruits on us. We cannot just be using up the ground. A time must come when we must start practicing that righteousness and doing the works of Jesus Christ. Please read the Bible study on Come Home. We have explained what God expects for every born-again Christian the moment they are born again. You cannot dissociate the fruit of the Spirit from the anointing of the Holy Spirit, as we have explained in the Perfect Redemption Plan Part 4. For the olive oil or the anointing or the fatness of the olive tree of the Triune God is obtained when the olives are crushed. Please revisit the chapters on the Trinity and on the anointing of the Holy Ghost in that Perfect Redemption Plan Part 4. All these Bible studies of my weekly milk are linked. You cannot pick and choose which one you want to read. You must read them all. Chapter 2 The Works of the Flesh 
Now the works of the flesh are clearly revealed, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lustfulness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, fightings, jealousies, angers, rivalries, divisions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkennesses, revelings, and things like these, of which I tell you before, as I also said before, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21 Where did Paul mention it before? It was to the Corinthians, he said, Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor abusers, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9 to 10 when a person who professes to be a born-again Christian yet enjoys practicing these evident works of the flesh, it means that he or she is not born again or is backsliding, and if he or she dies in that backsliding state, he or she will go to hell also. Sometimes some Christians fall into those works of the flesh which are but sins because they do not know that they are sins, even iniquities. But thank God when they are taught, if they are born again but only backsliding, they will repent and stop practicing them. The problem of the Corinthians church was that they did not know who they were in Christ and what God has freely given to them. That is why they were sinning. Paul explained to them who they were in Christ, and when we read the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, they had stopped doing those sexual sins and those idolatries. The answer of Paul to any problem in the church is, you do not know who you are in Christ and what God has freely given to you. Let me explain it to you. It is crucial that every born-again believer should know the perfect redemption plan of God and its application, and all the Bible studies associated with them, even these my weekly milk. I believe with my whole heart that there are genuine born-again Christians who are practicing those works of the flesh because they are ignorant but I trust God that they will know the truth, and the truth will make them free. For Hosea said, God's people perish for lack of knowledge, and because they have rejected the knowledge of God in his written word. Hosea 4 verse 6 My prayer is that you and I will not fall into any of these two categories, but we will know the truth and will become doers of that truth not hearers only, deceiving ourselves, James 1 verse 22. Now let us try to detail those works of the flesh. I was shocked when a sister asked me what reveling meant. I thought it was trivial for everybody, and the Lord told me to detail everything. So that is what we are going to do here. 2. 1. Adultery Adultery, according to the Webster Dictionary, is a violation of the marriage bed, a crime or a civil injury which introduces or may introduce into a family a spurious, not legitimate or bastard offspring. Unsaved people have practices that do not line up with the word of God. Adultery is when one of the spouses mates with someone else, other than his or her spouse. It does not matter whether that person is single or married. Some of the unsaved people even swap their wife or their husband. It is great evil and adultery, even if the people are consenting to the swapping. All adulterers have their place in hell, in the lake of fire. 
If a born-again Christian falls into adultery, he or she needs to repent of that adultery and confess it to his spouse to expose the work of darkness because it is not just against God that he or she has sinned, but also against his or her spouse. People will say, I have confessed it to God. I do not need to confess it to my spouse. It is the greatest mistake to hide it, for there must be transparency in the couple. The Bible says of Adam and Eve, before they fell into sin, they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Genesis 2 verse 25 It is when they both sinned that they started to cover themselves, for they had something to hide, even a sin. Go and see a mature believer with your spouse if you need help, but confess your adultery to your spouse. James says, Confess faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous one avails much. James 5 verse 16 It is very important in marriage to confess our sins, trespasses and faults to one another and pray for one another so that we may be healed of our hurts. Marriage is like the relationship between Jesus the bridegroom and the church his bride and between God the Father who is the husband and Israel the wife. When you read Jeremiah chapter 3, adultery and divorce are discussed. Idolatry in the Bible is likened to spiritual adultery. Because we are married to God and worshipping idols is cheating on God our husband. God knew that Israel was committing spiritual adultery. Though it hurt him, he just wanted Israel to confess her adultery and he would forgive her. God's eyes see everywhere. You cannot hide from God's presence. Psalm 139 verse 7 to 12 but he wants us to take our responsibilities and ownership of our mistakes. The fact that the person confesses his or her adultery means that the person is truly remorseful and wants to amend his or her ways and do his or her best to work on the marriage. But if the person does not confess it, it means that the person might do it again. People must take their responsibilities. If Christians knew that God's standard for adultery was to not just confess it to him, but also to his or her spouse, they would think twice before committing it. If the other spouse is born again, God will give them the grace to forgive and the Holy Spirit will heal the brokenheartedness. And with time the wounds will heal and trust will be rebuilt. If a couple talks about everything, even all temptations they have at work or in church, they expose the works of the devil. They will not fall into adultery. As you read your Bible, notice how God, who is the husband, relates with Israel, who is his wife. Notice how Jesus the bridegroom relates with the church who is his bride and then reproduce it in your marriage. From Genesis to Revelation, you have the way God relates to his wife Israel. There have been a lot of adulteries on Israel's part, but God has always been faithful, ready to forgive. There were times that God wanted to give them a bill of divorcement, but when Israel genuinely repented, God forgave them, and over time, trust was rebuilt between God and Israel. Israel would put away all her lovers, idols, and only have God. People can forgive you any sin, but give them time to rebuild the trust. They must see that you have genuinely changed, and it was not just lip service you did by confessing that unfaithfulness. God had experienced the unfaithfulness of Israel, his wife, and though he forgave her and delivered her, he wanted to see if in the heart of Israel there was only God and no one else.
So he took them on a long journey to reveal what was in their hearts. And the very moment Moses went up on Mount Sinai for forty days and forty nights, they built idols of two gold calves to go back to Egypt. They proved that they could not be trusted. Trust is built, so let the people see in your life that they can trust you. It is not for you to force them to trust you. Let them observe your life and conclude that you have genuinely changed, and they can trust you with their life and dare again love you with all their heart, soul, mind and strength. Exodus 20 and Matthew 22 verse 37 when God says, Their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Hebrews 10 verse 17 It does not mean that God suffers from amnesia. That is the wrong understanding of who God is. David, a man after God's own heart, understood what it meant. It meant that God, in His infinite mercy, has decided to deal with us, not according to our transgressions, sins or iniquities, after we have made the decision of repenting of them. He says, Jehovah is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. He will not always chasten, nor will He keep His anger for ever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, Jehovah pities those who fear him, for he knows our form. He remembers that we are dust. Psalm 103 verse 8 to 14 Just like God was angry when the people were unfaithful to him, your spouse also will be angry and broken hearted when you tell him or her of your unfaithfulness. The Bible says, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Ephesians 4 verse 26 Allow the spouse who has been betrayed to vent her feeling and her anger, for God knows our form. He remembers that we are dust. He knows the feelings of our weaknesses, our pain and brokenheartedness. The spouse that has been betrayed is rightfully angry and broken in heart. People will say, I know if I tell my adultery to my spouse, it will be a divorce for sure. Jesus himself tells us that if there are sexual immoralities, divorce can be allowed in Matthew 5 verse 32. God gave a bill of divorce to the kingdom of Israel with a capital in Samaria because of their spiritual adultery and later on gave a bill of divorce to Judah also because of her spiritual adultery. Jehovah also said to me in the days of Josiah the king, Have you seen that which backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree and has fornicated there. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn to me. But she did not return, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw, when for all the causes for which backsliding Israel committed adultery, I sent her away and gave a bill of divorce to her. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but she went and whored. She also. And it happened, from the folly of her whoredom, she defiled the land and fornicated with stones and stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah was not turned to me with her whole heart, but was falsehood, says Jehovah. And Jehovah said to me, The backsliding Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Judah. 
Go and cry these words towards the north and say, Return, O backsliding Israel, says Jehovah, and I will not cause my anger to fall on you. For I am merciful, says Jehovah, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity, that you have sinned against Jehovah your God, and have scattered your ways to the strangers under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, says Jehovah. Turn, O backsliding sons, says Jehovah, for I am married to you, and I will take you one from a city, and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Jeremiah 3, verse 6 to 14. We cannot work on that marriage or do counselling unless you first of all acknowledge that unfaithfulness to the person you are married to. Just like God asked Israel and Judah to acknowledge their adultery to him and to them before they could work on forgiveness and restoration of marriage. We must do everything according to the scriptures. God will touch the heart of the person who is angry and wounded because of the betrayal and heal the broken heartedness, and the couple will have to go through marriage counselling. With time, trust will be rebuilt and the person that was betrayed will be able to deal with his or her spouse, not according to his or her unfaithfulness. It does not mean she has forgotten. No. Because if you do not remember what led you to that adultery, you will repeat the same mistake. That is why God recorded the mistakes of the people of God in the Bible for all of us to learn from them. It was not to shame his people or that he did not forgive them. He truly did. It was to remind them of how they fell so that they would not repeat the same mistakes. Whenever the new generation was acting like their fathers, God reminded them of what caused their father to be sent into captivity, even receive the bill of divorce from the Lord. Nehemiah 9 That is why many people who remarry have a higher percentage of divorce. Many did not sit down to analyze what went wrong in the previous marriage and why they divorced what their share of responsibility in that divorce was, so that they could work on themselves. My prayer is that you will not suffer from spiritual amnesia, but you will remember why you fell into sin and what led to it, so that you can avoid the same mistake next time. To be continued. <laughs>